Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Due to YouTube's changing quote-unquote community standards, I created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can see all of my stuff over there, including my political and social commentary, as well as my current events videos. The links to my YouTube and Rumble channels, as, as well as links to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a recon the role-playing game advice video on intelligence. Uh, a while back I did a video and I mentioned the term, the military term, intelligence, meaning gathering information on the enemy. That's what I mean by intelligence. And I'm not talking about how smart somebody is, I'm saying, you know. And uh, a couple of my friends called and asked what constitute, what would be good to put in their game that would constitute intelligence that the players could notice. And so I, I figured I'd do a video on it. Uh, when you, when you say intelligence, that's a very, very broad term. Virtually anything you see somebody doing can give you hints as to what they're up to. Uh, anything out of the ordinary, you know, somebody digging a ditch, you got you know, you got to find out why. Are they planting a mine? Are they digging a drain drainage ditch? You know, that kind of thing. It has been said many times by many different people over the years that military intelligence is a contradiction in terms, and I have said that myself as a joke. <clears throat> for the most part, this is 100% accurate. I personally knew intelligence analysts in the military who couldn't see a threat unless the enemy posted signs and sent out radio broadcasts detailing, detailing their plans. However, this video is about intelligence. You, as the mission director, can leak to the players in-game that might warn them of some danger or some sort of enemy operation. For example, while on long-range reconnaissance patrol alert, the point man finds a trail where footprints suggest 10 to 20 people walked along here carrying heavy loads. Chances are this is a VC supply convoy. They often use bicycles to help carry larger loads. They will have armed guards and will have sentries along the trail. If the convoy is heading toward a friendly base or post, they might be supporting an attack. On the contrary, it may just be refugees fleeing a battle area. You don't know. It depends on what's going on in the area. But, if, like I said, if the convoy is heading towards a friendly base or post, they might be supporting some sort of an attack. Finding heavy vehicle tracks, empty fuel drums, uh, oily rags, empty oil drums may indicate heavy trucks. This is an organ. This would means that. An organized military unit, possibly with artillery, has been there. Probably in VA. If it's not yours, it's got you gotta consider it's the enemies. Finding an old campsite, like you know, hastily covered latrines, old cooking fires, discarded rice or eating utensils, damaged clothing, etc., is a good indicator of enemy movement or activity in the area. Think of it like this. If you've ever gone camping, what signs did you leave that might indicate to a park ranger how many people camped there, what they ate, where they defecated, how long ago they left the area, that kind of thing. Unless you're policing the area, you know, with the military precision, you've left something. I'm just saying. Covering your trail is important, and especially in a war. Now, blood trails are a special threat. They are either really good or really bad. Bad guys have either been wounded badly, you know, too badly to cover their trail, or they're intentionally leaving a trail to lead you into an ambush. So keep that in mind. One thing many players don't realize is the importance of locals. If you are friendly to a local village, giving them food, medical help, or other necessities, be nice to them. They may inform you of local VC activities. Uh, many players are, are the kill them all and let God sort them out variety, and it does not, it, that attitude does not endear you to the locals, let me tell you. However, if they do help you, the VC will probably know and may retaliate. So helping is costly, especially for these locals. Keep in mind, if they don't help you, they may not be VC, they just may be afraid of the VC. 
Vietcong sympathizers in a village will send out false intelligence to work against you. Keep that in mind. Um, here's another thing. What, what you want to do is you, ha you have to kind of understand the mindset of a guerrilla operative working in an area. This person may, he's dedicated to the cause. He may want to kill Americans and their allies. A VC operative wants to be invisible. VC sympathizers are a special kind of crazy. They infiltrated everything, everywhere. Villages, Arvin bases, the, the, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, they're supposed to be your allies. Uh, stateside bases, artillery bases, everything, everywhere. They were there. Bad coordinates can get Americans killed by American artillery. Arvin artillery units were notoriously bad shots. Or, or were they? Were they just you know, infiltrated by the VC and were giving them bad shooting coordinates? It's just, it's crazy. But all this happened. One VC sympathizer on an American base could cause all kinds of chaos without ever being detected. Changing orders, poisoning food, disabling comm gear, you name it. It's, I mean, and if you had a way of communicating with other VC, oh my God, that, that's an ambush waiting to happen right there. Um, now this is something else you need, you need to consider. These, these uh, local VC operatives, VC snipers could fire one or two shots, killing an important officer or whatever, whatever else, and then hide their gear and blend into a local village. Okay, that happened frequently. Two or three such attacks a week by a single sniper was fairly common. Hunting these snipers was a dirty job. Nobody liked it. And it, 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 was, it, it was very, very dangerous because these snipers, a lot of them are trained. I mean, if you went to Arkansas and started trying to throw weight around, and then Arkansas mountain boys, the swamp guys, you know, running around with their they they hunt forever they hunt for food they 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 love to hunt there's their gun guys how how difficult could they make your life if they wanted to think about that that's the vc right here it's the same basic situation these people were raised with guns they hunt for a living they've been given a really nice rifle they hide it in the jungle they you know they blend in with the locals and they can make your life hell Snipers like these could hit a chopper pilot, causing a, possibly causing a crash. They could hit a base commander. They could shoot an ordnance fuel depot. Excuse me, an ordnance depot or a fuel depot. Possibly causing an explosion. Or some other important target. You never know. Um, you don't have to get into the base to hurt them. Just shoot the fuel dump. Shoot where they store their ammo. You know? There's a reason they don't salute officers at fire bases and forward operating bases. Because that's a target that you make that guy a target for a VC sniper. If 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 a, a new guy shows up, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Tom Hanks, Say, uh, not Saving Private Ryan. Uh, Forrest Gump, where he shows up and the first thing they did, they saluted Lieutenant Dan. And he goes, drop, don't, don't salute me. Uh, VC snipers everywhere. Remember that? Same freaking thing. That, that there's a reason that they don't salute officers because they be, when you make that officer a target the worst thing you can do in a, in a forward area is salute an officer okay as a matter of fact that's a good way to get a bad officer killed I'm just saying not that I would ever want you to I'm just, I'm just saying the most inno as, going back to the intelligence aspect of it the most innocuous bit of information may seem meaningless until it's paired with other seemingly meaningless bits of information a VC convoy by itself just means they have a supply route. Add to that, local villagers are disappearing, possibly being conscripted. Then, heavy vehicle trucks and discarded fuel drums are found in the area. Someone is going to hit, is going to get hit by a big attack, and they're going to be hit hard. I'm just saying that's that's what that means. Because you got they're lo they're they're conscripting locals. They're you know for for extra soldiers. They're they're moving heavy equipment into the area, like ooh, tra uh, uh, vehicle-mounted artillery, for example. Uh, the, the convoys are supplying them the the, the, the staging area with food. Somebody's going to get hit. It's just the way it is. Two of the best movies to watch for intelligence intelligence examples are *The Battle of the Bulge*, is a really great movie. It's got Henry Fonda. Okay.
pay attention to Henry Fonda's character in that. And We Were Soldiers is not bad. Pay attention to Sam Elliott's character. Uh, that one, not so much, but the, that, the although that one is about Vietnam. Uh, anything that would give a hint as to what the enemy's doing is intelligence. And it could be anything, literally. One of the best ways to understand successful intelligence gathering and utilization is to examine intelligence failures. And I've got a good one right here. Uh, in 1954, the French had established an airbase at Dien Bien Phu. It was surrounded by high mountains, considered impenetrable. Uh, the heavy equipment couldn't be... Uh, uh, were, there, there were no roads up in the mountains, so they couldn't get heavy equipment up in there. Most military commanders figured that base, the mountains, gave it like a, like a natural wall around the base. So they were, they were happy with it. The French knew that the Viet Minh had artillery, the Viet Minh were like their Viet Cong. They knew that the Viet Minh had artillery, but it didn't have the range to get over the mountains, so that, they, they were safe, right? Here's the thing, General Giap was conscripting local civilians, but the French knew they were farmers and Giap didn't have enough weapons to equip, equip them. General Giap was the Viet Minh general. Uh, they, the, the French knew that they were farmers, they weren't trained, they didn't, and Giap didn't have enough weapons to equip them. The French really didn't consider them a threat, so they figured he's conscripting farmers, oh well, you know. What Giap did, this was brilliant, okay, what Giap did was he disassembled his artillery pieces and had the civilians carry them up the mountains piece by piece to hidden caves. where they were reassembled into working artillery pieces. He didn't need roads, he had feet. Giap now had the high ground around the base and could fire his artillery directly down into Dien Bien Phu. The base was taken, it was it was a slaughter. I mean, you, you, you and anytime the French sent up uh, airplanes to try to find out where the artillery was so they could shoot back at them, the, they were in caves so that the French couldn't find them. Listing things to watch for here, I mean, that was just a massive failure of intelligence. When they're when the, when the locals, when, when the bad guys are conscripting civilians in the area, when civilians are disappearing, there's a reason for it. Never, ever underestimate your opponent. Listing things to watch for is just not possible because a good intel officer can glean tons of useful information from a discarded bottle cap. Other intelligence officers sometimes overlook obvious sources of information like, oh, I don't know, hundreds of civilians disappearing for no good reason. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. What I do when I run a game is I figure out what the bad guys are doing and then figure out what tiny things they could discard or let slip verbally, you know, word of mouth kind of thing, some kind of a clue so that the, the players can get an idea of what the bad guys are up to. That's what I do. I figure out what the bad guys are doing and figure out how they can screw it up in subtle ways so that the players can get hints. You don't want to tell them what they're up to, but you get subtle hints. Make the players work for it. It is an intelligence gathering situation. If the enemy is going to send you messages as to what they're doing, there would be no reason to have intelligence gathering. You just listen to them. The enemy likes to hide. That's the whole point of guerrilla warfare. You're hiding and fighting the war. You're not doing it out in the open. Intelligence gathering is as much about observation as it is about spycraft. So any idiot in the field can find something important. And it's usually the little things that add up. I want to say in the, the movie The Battle of the Bulge, they caught a bunch of uh, soldiers with rubber hoses. And they couldn't figure out what the rubber hoses were for. Later on, they pieced it together that the weakness of the uh, of the German tanks was that they use a shitload of fuel and they're running out of fuel. So if we deprive them of being able to capture fuel sources, fuel depots, things like that, they'll run out of fuel, run out of steam, they won't be able to do anything. Because a tank without fuel is pretty much useless. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, any any bit of intelligence is useful. It, you you got you to gotta play it subtle. you got to be subtle. Okay? Let them figure it out. That's the best, inf the best advice I can give. I hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. God bless one and all.
Clarissa Lowe, a historian from the future. Delmore Kane, a Civil War veteran turned outlaw. This oddball pairing faces a conspiracy of epic proportions spanning the centuries. If you like action and adventure westerns with a splash of science fiction and fantasy, check out my book series Drifters and their ongoing adventures.